lived on Earth before the dinosaurs? It's no secret that during our planet's life, evolution has undergone rehauls and development almost from scratch. There have been mass extinctions of animals and plants several times over. Around 200 million years ago, the Earth was inhabited by giant lizards, the dinosaurs. Since the first fossils were discovered and the dinosaurs' appearance reconstructed, they grow more popular with each passing year. Dinosaurs are featured in short movies and cartoons and turn up as characters in children's programs, comic books, and even computer games. The reason for the dinosaurs' popularity begins with their appearance. Their size was unusual compared to animals in the modern world. From a human perspective, dinosaurs are perfect hunters and giant monsters. They were the masters of the plants then, just as humans are now. But even before the dinosaurs, the Earth was nonetheless inhabited by similarly interesting creatures. In this video, we'll tell you about all the beasts that lived long before the dinosaurs that were just as strange and unusual. Cynonathus The remains of this tiny, woolly predator has been found in Africa and South America. Although extremely similar to modern mammals, the Cynonathus is still just a distant relative. Scientists have classified the animal as a therapsid. These beast eaters lived on our planet not long before the age of dinosaurs, but also millions of years before the first mammals appeared. Their appearance somewhat resembled that of an ordinary wolf. By size, Cynonathus was rather comparable to the gregarious predator we know. Apparently, this is why scientists assume that the Cynonathus' lifestyle and hunting patterns were similar to the gray forest predators we recognize today. Helicoprion Though these marine predators look much like sharks in appearance, they are not their ancestors exactly. The Helicoprion are actually closer in relation to the modern perch. They seem to have appeared here 40 million years prior to the dinosaurs and 20 million years after that disappeared from the face of the earth. No creature to have lived since the Helicoprion has had a mouth mechanism even remotely similar to this animal's jaws. In fact, these fish's lower jaws resembled a circular saw and can rotate, practically sawing its prey apart with its sharp teeth. The Lato Archon Sarphagus The eldest member of the Ichthyosaurs line is direct evidence of the processes of evolution. It's believed that this 9-meter-long sea lizard became the menace of the world's oceans for 8 million years following the Permian extinction. This means that in order for the species to survive, the Thalato Archon occupied a vacated niche of larger marine predators. The Ichthyosaurs went extinct approximately 25 million years before dinosaurs went extinct. Perhaps they just couldn't compete with some of the new challengers to the throne of sea hunters. Dimetrodon Due to its huge dorsal crest, the Dimetrodon is often considered a dinosaur and placed in dinosaur-era kits. In fact, some specialists believe that the Dimetrodon was a relative of the Stegosaurus. Dimetrodons, however, were synapsids. This means they were closer to mammals than they were dinosaurs. And to be fair, they disappeared around 50 million years before the first true dinosaurs. Scientists believe that with a length of up to 4.5 meters or 15 feet, the Dimetrodon was ranked as the largest predator of its time. Camaraceras The Paleozoic seas were inhabited by cephalopod mollusks and crustaceans, and the Camaraceraceans were most likely some of the most important creatures in the food chain of the ancient underwater world. Scientists have found shells from this clam that grew up to 10 meters or 33 feet. One could picture what such a monster would have looked like when its shell was also accompanied by a bunch of tentacles. More than likely, it was sustained by similar crustaceans and smaller cephalopods. Dunkleosteus Long before the dinosaurs, the Dunkleosteus reigned as another monster of the sea. Weighing in at 4 tons and up to 10 meters, or 33 feet in length, this fish feared no being. The presence of thick armor and powerful jaws made it a major predator in the ancient seas and oceans, and this was 400 million years before the age of dinosaurs. There's speculation that the Dunkleosteus' main food source were primordial sharks, which it was able to literally bite in half. According to researchers, the power of its bite would be comparable to modern crocodiles. 
Estamenosuchus. By appearance alone, you couldn't tell that the Estamenosuchus was a formidable beast, and scientists are still on the fence concerning its predatory preferences. This monster eater looked like a cross between a hippopotamus and a triceratops, but with a weight of around 450 kilograms, or 992 pounds, and a length of over 4 meters, about 13 feet, it was definitely a sizable animal for its time. The Estamenosuchus had fairly sharp teeth, suggesting it was carnivorous. At the same time, however, these animals had a very developed digestive system, which was more typical of herbivores. It is even possible that they evolved into omnivores, like modern pigs. Anomalocaris They were also giants specific to the Cambrian period as well. Of course, they were still rather distant from later monsters, but at one time, the largest underwater predator was the Anomalocaris. It was an arthropod about 60 centimeters or 2 feet long, with a remarkable structure for its eyes in addition to its size. The creature was noted for its excellent vision. The dual-faceted eyes contained 16,000 hexagonal shapes. A modern fly, by comparison, has four times fewer of such lenses. Hallucigenia This 3-centimeter long worm, or 1.2 inches, was one of the strangest creatures to have ever lived on Earth. Imagine a worm with two rows of stilted legs and a spine throughout its back. Now add an elongated head with a pair of simple eyes. It's possible this weird appearance was the reason behind its name. Scientists speculate that hallucigenia were the ancestors of modern arthropods. Arthropleura Having gone extinct 300 million years ago, these giant millipedes were over 2.5 meters long, or 8 feet, and considered to be the largest invertebrates ever created by nature. The flat millipede is thought to have had 30 pairs of legs and a tough, chitinous shell. Not a single fossil, however, was found to have a preserved mouth mechanism. Therefore, the way this ancient creature feasted and tasted its environment is still a mystery to scientists. Carnifex Although only two skeletons of this crocodilomorph have ever been discovered, it can attest to being the strangest of all known members of its genus. Carnifex inhabited the swamps of what is now North America approximately 230 million years ago. Presumably, modern alligators evolved from this beast. This 3-meter or 9-feet long creature's main oddity was that it moved across land on two legs. That's correct, the Carnifex used only its hind legs to walk. Without a doubt, dinosaurs were the pinnacle of evolution during their era. But each of these unusual animals show us that across all times, nature has created beings that, much like dinosaurs, are capable of inspiring the imagination with their appearance, size, and abilities to adapt to their surrounding environment. In the struggle for a place under the sun, they sought to occupy various vacated niches in the food chain, and subsequently, they themselves gave way to future contenders for the title of ruler of the planet. Evolution never ceases its motion. Even now, nature is constantly working to improve all its species to better adapt to a changing worldscape. And if humankind is lucky enough to continue forward along this difficult path, then millions of years from now, our distant descendants will also admire the animals that lived in our time, just as we now admire the dinosaurs of eras gone by. The Most Advanced Dinosaurs During the dinosaur epoch, which lasted over 150 million years, hundreds of species of these giant reptiles appeared. At times, their evolution took on rather bizarre appearances, and through such long time periods, species appeared among them that would reach perfection in one form or another. Today, we will try to establish a hierarchy of the leaders and the variety of ways in which individuals from these particular species dominated the planet. Most of us are only familiar with the species of dinosaurs who appeared as heroes in popular childhood cartoons and Hollywood blockbusters, but not all of these dinosaurs represented the most evolved members of their families. By subscribing to our channel, you can discover more about the less promoted appointees of the Age of Dinosaurs. In addition, whenever you comment on these videos and express your opinions on the subject matter with likes, you're able to share this knowledge with other users. The Largest Dinosaur Many species of dinosaur have staked out their struggle for survival using their gigantic size. 
Most of these creatures would be considered actual giants when compared to the animals that inhabit our planet today. The sauropods, however, were the undisputed leaders in this competition. Representatives from this species of reptile are considered huge, even by dinosaur age standards. Most of our viewers will be more familiar with families such as the Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus, but these individuals were not the record breakers as far as the largest dinosaur title is concerned. It is believed that the body length of the Diplodocus could reach up to 33 meters and weigh next to 30 tons. Brachiosaurus only grew to about 26 meters in length and weighed only 56 tons. One of the first dinosaurs to be discovered was the Amphicelius. Its remains were unearthed in 1878. Later traces of these giants were found in Africa and the Americas. Reconstructions made from their remains tell us that Amphicelius could reach a length of 65 meters and weigh close to 150 tons fully grown. Even fewer legitimate footsteps have been left by species such as the Argentinosaurus. Just from the size of the preserved vertebrae alone, which are over a meter and a half high, scientists suggest that with a height of 35 meters, it could weigh around 180 tons. The bloodiest dinosaur. More than likely, when asked about the most bloodthirsty dinosaur to have lived, viewers will answer that it was the Tyrannosaurus or the Carnotaurus. After all, its representatives of certain predatory theropods who appear as the antagonists to the main characters of various cartoons and films about dinosaurs. Yet, among this family, there existed more dangerous monsters, some of whom even the T-Rex would have some trouble with. An example of such killing machines would be the Majungasaurus, Mapusaurus, and Albertosaurus. By size, the Majungasaurus was rather comparable to the Tyrannosaurus, but differed in its shorter head and powerful neck. This sort of body structure allowed the dinosaur to grab hold of prey and shake it to death. The Majungasaurus had a length of around 12 meters and weighed close to 3 tons. Among the theropods, it was considered a true giant. Because of this, it is believed that the Moposaurus hunted in packs and could even attack Argentinosaurus without any fear. Albertosaurus was significantly inferior to the T-Rex in size. However, recent research tells us it gained serious advantages in both speed and agility. And while many researchers believe the Tyrannosaurus were perhaps merely scavengers in their time, there is little doubt concerning the Albertosaurus and its ability to simply catch up to its prey and tear it to shreds. The Dinosaur with the Most Powerful Bite and as for which of the dinosaurs had the most powerful jaws, there is little in the way of debate. Here, the undisputed leader is the infamous Tyrannosaurus. The only dinosaurs to come close to matching this sort of biting power were the ancient crocodiles and giant sharks of the epic. According to scientists, its bite is twice as powerful as that of modern crocodiles still living today. Amongst mammals, wolves and hyenas possess an ability to split bones with their teeth. Reptilian jaws, on the other hand, do not allow for such action. The jaws and the teeth of the Tyrannosaurus are essentially the same. Neither are suited for splitting hard bones. However, the monstrous strength of this predator's jaw muscles made up for this apparent shortcoming in bone splitting. As the prey were being devoured, the bite would cause the victim's bones to burst like an open fracture. Few people could stand up to such a predator with these sorts of injuries. The Fastest Dinosaur Many dinosaurs were capable of mustering fairly high running speeds, but amongst the representatives of this epic, there lived giants ranging from the size of buses to animals no bigger than the modern chicken. Therefore, in comparing speeds, it pays to take a look at the mass of their bodies. According to the latest research being done using computer simulation, a candidate for the fastest dinosaur among the large carnivores might be the Carnotaurus. At 7 meters in height and weighing upwards of 1.5 tons, the Carnotaurus was able to reach speeds of about 50 kilometers per hour. This is faster than the world record holders in sprinting. By the way, these same studies have noted that the speed of the Tyrannosaurus was comparable to that of modern soccer players during a match. A fact like this lends to the theory that it might also have been an active predator of its time and not merely a scavenger. The undisputed record holder among dinosaurs as far as running goes could be the Celephus. This tiny carnivorous theropod, up to 3 meters tall and weighing 30 kilograms, ran at speeds of about 80 kilometers an hour. The Gallimimum, Struthamim, and Ornithomim were capable of obtaining similar speeds. The Most Intelligent Dinosaur The intelligence of living creatures is determined using the ratio of brain size to that of its body. Most of the larger herbivorous dinosaurs, such as the Stegosaurus, 
had walnut-sized brains. With their size in mind, their intelligence might not even be worth mentioning. Undoubtedly, the most intelligent dinosaur we know of was the Trudon. This small nocturnal hunter was once even considered to be an ancestor to creatures whose evolution would eventually contribute to the emergence of man. The Most Beautiful Dinosaur The concept of beauty is rather subjective, and it's very difficult to determine the criteria by which to select the most beautiful dinosaurs of them all. Some people prefer the dorsal crests and plates of the Spinosaurus and Stegosaurus. Others admire the chic collars adorned by the Triceratops, while still others look at the predatory grace of the Velociraptors and the armor for protection against their enemies. There are theories that the collar on the Triceratops was also a means of defense, as were the plates on the back of the Stegosaurus. But without a doubt, the most armored lizard of the dinosaur era was the Ankylosaurus and its closest relatives. Its backside, head, and neck were covered with thick growths of keratin, the material hair is made up of. In combination with its short stature and wide legs, this protection was virtually invulnerable to the claws and fangs of predatory dinosaurs in its environment. The Scariest Dinosaur Scientific studies and reconstructions of the appearances of various dinosaurs show that many of them would have shot fear in the hearts of even the bravest of men. Huge teeth and claws, combined with an ability to run fast and jump high, these characteristics would have left mankind little chance of survival if humans and dinosaurs had ever coexisted on the planet during the same era. Among the theropods, there are a large number of rather fearsome predators. The title for the most terrifying of them can easily be given to the T-Rex, with the Carnotaurus, Spinosaurus, Gigantosaurus, and Uteraptor close behind. However, despite the fact that it technically cannot be considered a dinosaur, we decided to name the Mosasaurus the most frightening predator of the dinosaur age. These giant sea lizards were the true kings of the underwater world of their era and had virtually no close competitors. And given the fact that a human in water is absolutely helpless before the strata of creatures in the aquatic world, a meeting with a Mosasaurus in its native territory could be considered a worse nightmare for any person. The Strongest Dinosaur In truly identifying which dinosaur-era lizard held the title for strongest amongst them, one must at least compile data on possible fights between these individuals and the consequences of these encounters. In fact, scientists very rarely come across real evidence in the form of claw and tooth marks preserved on animal remains. Therefore, the question of the strongest dinosaur is unlikely to see a verified, unequivocal answer. It is clear that the carnivorous theropods were in most cases stronger than their herbivorous counterparts, and it can be suggested that the T. rex, Carnotaurus, and Gigantosaurus and other representatives of this family take the cake for the classification of strongest dinosaurs. In fact, though, they were much smaller than their prey and significantly inferior in strength. Many native Africans would tell you the strongest animal of the savanna is not the lion nor even the crocodile, but the buffalo. The enormous mass of this animal multiplied by its great agility makes the beast's horns a very formidable weapon in a fight against nearly any predator. In analogy with the African buffalo, we can call upon the Triceratops as the leader of our strength discipline. The Smallest Dinosaur When mentioning dinosaurs, most of us imagine gigantic lizards, but there were yet smaller animals living amongst them. To present date, the smallest representatives we have of the dinosaur age are the Oculodentivus. This baby was the size of a modern hummingbird and was discovered in a drop of amber in Burma. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you found these facts about dinosaurs fascinating, you can discover a lot of useful information about the lizards of that era and many more topics on our channel. The most dangerous dinosaurs that ever existed on the planet. The animal world in the age of dinosaurs, which existed tens of millions of years ago, according to some feature filmmakers, is very similar to a kind of circus, where the world of prehistoric giants that once inhabited our planet livens up in front of the viewer with astonishing vividness. But would you like to be in this world where all of the cages are open and fences are missing? There are a large number of giant, fast, and very dangerous creatures around who will not be very friendly with a man when they meet. When the question arises, which of the dinosaurs should be most feared? Which dinosaur is really the king of its time? Before determining the leader in our top, 
Be sure to subscribe to our channel in order to plunge headlong into the most interesting era in the history of our Earth, the age of dinosaurs. Rate our videos and write your opinion in the comments. And we're starting. 7th place, Gigantosaurus. This South American cousin was T Rex's main competitor in size. Some found Gigantosaurus's specimens were shorter in length, but in turn, it was smaller and slimmer than the Tyrannosaurus. According to scientists, the Gigantosaurus was one of the fastest dinosaurs of its time, overtaking the rest by at least 10 miles per hour. And all of this is possible thanks to the excellent balance of its body. This monster's skull was very large, but having a smaller brain size than its direct competitors, the species was neurologically primitive. However, according to paleontologists, he had a keen sense of smell, which combined with his athletic prowess and 8-ton weight made him a very formidable predator. In sixth place, we have Deinonychus. Deinonychus' discovery in 1964 completely changed our perception of dinosaurs as languid and clumsy. It was a creature clearly designed for rapid pursuit. Nearly twice the size of Velociraptor, Deinonychus was a very fast and most likely quick-witted hunter who hunted most often in the pack. Among other advantages, Deinonychus possessed clasped vertebrae that allowed his tail to strain for balance while running, and a retractable 5-inch claw on each foot which allowed him to hold his victims firmly with his paws. Deinonychus's hunting method is similar to the behavior of a hawk. He jumped on his victim, tightly clutching it with his limbs, pressed it with his weight to the ground, after which he tore it with his claws and teeth. In fifth place of our top is Byungasaur. This monster weighed just over a ton at a 30-foot length. According to scientists, Myungasaur's vision was very weak, but he had a very good sense of smell, which helped him a lot in the hunt. He ate mostly smaller raptors, though he did not earn his bad reputation with this. On the discovered remains of Myungasaur on the island of Madagascar, there are distinct traces of teeth that perfectly combined with his own dental pattern, and this evidence indicates that this one-ton theropod fed on its own relatives. Undoubtedly, this is the hallmark of this ruthless killer. However, it is not known exactly whether they were prey during active hunting or were already dead at the time of eating. Trudon takes the fourth place. In this case, the danger does not come down to the size and strength of the dinosaur bite. Trudon, whose height was about one and a half meters, weighing about 88 pounds, was a cunning raptor that made up for the lack of muscle with a large amount of brain. In fact, it had the highest brain-to-body weight ratio of any known dinosaur. Reconstruction of his brain revealed nascent signs of intelligence. When many nerve cells are in the same area, for the brain to function more effectively, making him the most neurologically advanced dinosaur of its time. The shape of the fossilized skull remains suggests that he had huge eyes that gave him superior vision as well as the ability to see in low light and search for the victim at night. A flock of vigilant and deft Trudons hunting in a flock could easily kill a much larger animal. So, we've come down to the third most dangerous dinosaur in history. Utahraptor is in third place. The mighty Utahraptor was three times larger and bloodthirstier than his cousin, Velociraptor. Armed with a 12-inch sickle claw on each back foot, he tore his victim to death. The bones of his legs were unusually thick to support powerful muscles aimed to repeatedly drive a deadly claw into its victim. Compared to its younger raptor cousins, it is possible that Utahraptor hunted in flocks. Just imagine, like, terrible 3-meter and 1,100-pound wolves. They chase their prey many times larger than themselves. In addition, the brain cavity in the skull was closer in volume to birds than to other predatory raptors. Based on this, we can conclude that the Utahraptor was cunning and smarter than many dinosaurs. In second place, we have a representative of the water element, Mosasaurus. This ocean monster is so huge that it eats sharks as a snack 
and would effortlessly destroy Tyrannosaurus rexes with one incredible lunge. In length, the Mosasaurus reached 55 feet with a weight of about 27 tons. His body was very huge and elongated, and the size of his mouth would allow him to completely swallow the prey or tear it apart with one movement of the jaw. The whole body was covered with scaly skin, like current lizards. Mosasaurus is proof that the oceans of dinosaurs' times were much more terrible than land. While it's the only sea animal in our list, it's definitely one of the strongest, and its huge size inspires fear for all living beings on the planet. Well, the leader of our list does not need to be introduced. Tyrannosaurus's reputation as the strongest carnivore ever to roam the Earth is undeniable. Actually, his name Tyrannosaurus Rex literally means the King of Lizards, and there could be no doubt that he justified his name. The dimensions of this lizard are impressive. More than 5 meters in height with a length of 39 feet and the weight a staggering 7.7 .7 tons. For a long time, T. rex was considered the largest carnivore on Earth, but the subsequent discovery of Gigantosaurus and Spinosaurus called this fact into question. With powerful legs, Tyrannosaurus could run as fast as a professional footballer, but balance problems allowed Gigantosaurus to get ahead of him. T. rex's brain was twice as large as most other predatory giants, but his intellectual prowess was inferior to predators like Euteraptor. So how can Tyrannosaurus manage to hold the crown of Age of Dinosaurs leader? He may not have been the biggest, fastest, heaviest, or smartest dinosaur, but King T-Rex was the most versatile. An extraordinary sense of smell allowed Tyrannosaurus to track prey at long distances and search for corpses left by other predators. And of course, his most secret weapon is phenomenal bite which was stronger than any terrestrial animal that ever existed. T-Rex's jaws, easily splitting bones, compressed with a force almost as huge as the weight of his own body, using 60 powerful conical teeth with sharp edges. You have watched the 7 most dangerous dinosaurs in the history of their existence. If you enjoyed the video, then like it and write a comment. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so as not to miss new and exciting videos about the most interesting era in the history of our Earth, the Age of Dinosaurs. The Strangest and Most Unusual Dinosaurs Throughout our planet's existence, life has often taken on bizarre forms. Even during the Age of Dinosaurs, there appeared body shapes so unusual that it's difficult to believe they ever existed. Fossils provide us with direct evidence with their traits easily explained by understanding these ancient creatures' way of life and the environment they survived in. Let's go! Tanistrophius A lizard boasting a ridiculously large neck who didn't seem to possess the means to exist. It was extremely uncomfortable to move around on land, although most scientists lean towards the creature maintaining a serpentine mode of movement. With its tenacious claws connected to short, strong paws, it dug itself in to become an immovable object, like a rock or log. Its immense neck enabled it to dash at passing fish. This mode of feeding is indirectly indicated by its needle-sharp teeth. By subscribing to our channel right now, you can greatly increase your piggy bank of knowledge. A like, comment, and a bell will allow you to share your own opinion with as many people as possible who also share a love for dinosaurs and everything that has to do with them. Dimetrodon It's quite possible that this creature is one of the first legitimate ancestors of all subsequent dinosaurs on the planet and is distinguished with a large crest on its back. In a way, it's reminiscent of modern iguanas, but slightly more massive than modern reptiles. Scientists all agree on the matter of its absurdly large comb. In the particularly cold climate of the era, every bit of heat mattered. Therefore, its body evolved in a way in which blood vessels permeated the entire construction of the comb and acted as a giant array for solar calories. Longusquama This strange creature with its small body and huge sparse feathers on its back is certainly perplexing. Scientists disagree on the purpose of the sparse sail located on its back. And if everything is evident with the Dimetrodon, in this case it's extremely difficult to provide a rational explanation. The only plausible version of this is that it was used in attracting females during mating games, 
along with the assumption that these feathers would grow for a definitive length of time. Parasaurolophus This lizard once led a semi-aquatic lifestyle, with a peculiar interest being shown towards its very tall crest. Inside its structure, there are pathways connected to the nasal cavity. Scientists believe that it could easily have used this organ for breathing underwater when moving along the bed of a body of water. Another suggestion involves its ability to make loud, trumpeting noises during sharp exhalations. This also allowed it to effectively hide from predators in the water. Therizinosaurus A creature with wildly disproportionate claws and an almost upright gait that looks rather ridiculous. The purpose of such an imposing Freddy Krueger-like set of natural traits is still debated today. The skeleton appears so absurd that for a long time, it was suspected to be a turtle or an assemblage of fossils of various different species. Feathers have also recently been added to its reconstruction. Write in the comments why you believe it required such tools. Though, it's already been in the Guinness Book twice, once for strangest species and another time for longest known fossil of a claw. Amargosaurus, only discovered in 1991, is another genuinely surprising specimen for those who look at its reconstruction. All attempts to reconstruct its appearance have come out differently. One thing is clear, the back of its head and neck were covered with large spikes. There's no hint of a sail like that of the Dimetrodon. Thus, scientists have traditionally written these traits off as mating tools or basic protection from predators. Neither has it been proven that it was possible to control this organ, though scientists have found the presence of horny covers. Dilophosaurus an unusual predator which roamed the great expanses of North America sported a pair of crests on its muzzle. Paleontologists believe they might have been used for its body's thermoregulation. It's also possible they were used as a kind of identification mark or signal of apparent sexual dimorphism. Their hollow structure didn't allow any load on the neck. There's speculation among scientists that these ridges were brightly colored, though proving this is unrealistic. Dinochirus there's still debate as to the reconstruction of this dinosaur, though what is clear is that it had a ridiculously large hump and a tiny head, as well as front disproportionate paws equipped with gigantic claws. The protrusion on its back was not fleshy, and therefore its purpose is still unclear. There's debate concerning whether it served as a water reservoir or regulated blood circulation. In addition to all these features, it also had small eyes and a toothless beak. Acrotholus. It appeared very much like a man who is balded atop his head with age. The disproportionately large head looks as though it was reattached from another, larger dinosaur. In all likelihood, it used the bony outgrowth on the top of its head to ram predators, much like modern bulls, or perhaps to sort out territorial disputes with others of its species over females and land. One had to have a powerful neck to control such a heavy mace like that. Cyracosaurus. Among all the bird-like ceratopsids, it maintains the strangest appearance. Whereas the more famous triceratops only had small, spiky growths along their collars, here we can see some very real swords. It had no horns on its forehead, save for a single defensive object sticking straight out of the nasal portion of its skull. Not every predator could open its mouth against such an unusual defense mechanism, and it was difficult to break free of those spikes. Incisivosaurus. This is one of the ancestors of modern birds. A body entirely covered in plumage has been confirmed by scientists, though this is not the creature's main feature. Its teeth seem to have been of basic importance to it during its transition into having a true beak, but something along that evolutionary process clearly went awry. It had a pair of particularly protruding teeth towards the front of the upper jaw. These were very similar to rabbit incisors. Judging by their number and the absence of a reciprocal set on the lower jaw, the two top teeth seemingly had no purpose. Atopododentitus This was a dinosaur that once inhabited the prehistoric oceans. However, its strange mouth apparatus evokes a certain amazement, bewilderment, and genuine laughter. It would be rather difficult to live with such a clothespin on one's lips in the modern world, though there is actually a reasonable explanation for its appearance. It looks like it was used to pinch algae out of the surf lane and scrape them straight off the overgrown rocks. It could also be used to pluck away ingrown mollusks. The Atopatodentitus bears a slight resemblance to the modern platypus, but they are not genetically related. 
Epidexaterix. This small dinosaur once hid in the tree grounds of what is now southern China. It boasted a huge feathery tail, a funny-looking muzzle with a short toothy beak, and a very unusual forelimb hand. The pinky finger is the longest, and then the fingers decrease in size across the hand. Climbing trees must have been very convenient. An analogy with modern winged mammals and pterosaurs can clearly be observed here. Pegomasticaceae were small herbivorous dinosaurs with a very strange appearance. A small but extremely hard beak allowed easy access to tough bulbs and tree shoots. However, a pair of fangs also protruded from its lower jaw. It's highly possible that the species lived as an omnivore, which was why it required such an unusual jowl attribute. Its unusualness doesn't end there, as its entire back was covered with rigid spikes, very similar to those of modern porcupines. The length of its front limbs suggests that perhaps it could walk on its hind legs for short stints or utilize four points of support. Pterodostro Here we are able to observe the most unusual member of the flying dinosaurs. These animals' long jaws were unlikely to surprise anyone, though this case is different. The pterodostro's mouth was curved upwards like a spoonful of stubby teeth. Their mouth as the modern world could appreciate, would only have been for a particular diet. That would mean the smallest of crustaceans, plankton, or floating insects. A similar trait is utilized nowadays by Cetacean mammals. It's almost impossible to list all the unusual dinosaurs that existed in a singular video. This is just one of the few thematic reviews of ancient reptiles featured on our channel. Sign up if you're interested in the prehistoric world, click like, and hit the bell so as to not miss new videos, comment, and share the link with your friends on social media. See you next time, friends! The Strangest and Most Unusual Dinosaurs Part 2 The age of dinosaurs lasted for over 200 million years. Hundreds, if not thousands, of species of the gigantic reptiles appeared and disappeared forever from the Earth during this time. Each of them came with their own distinct characteristics. As nothing happens for not in nature, surely these traits had some kind of practical application. However, the appearance of a few dinosaurs would have surely brought a smile to our faces. Some might even surprise us. In our earlier video, we discussed some dinosaurs with an unusual appearance. But there were so many to choose from that one video alone couldn't do all the strange and funny lizards of that time justice. By subscribing to our channel, you can express your opinion about the videos using likes and be the first to learn about interesting facts concerning dinosaurs and the history of the planet. Also, subscribers can discuss the information covered in the comments section. Of course, dinosaurs look strange when compared to the majority of modern animals. But among the inhabitants of Age of Dinosaurs themselves, there are also examples that stand out sharply from the backdrop of their fellow beings. Thus, feast your attention on a selection of the most unusual and most peculiar dinosaurs. Wanonosaurus A tiny dinosaur which lived in present-day China during the late Cretaceous period, belonging to the Pachycephalosaurus family. What distinguishes these dinosaurs from others is their unusually shaped head. The bony outgrowth typically resembled a cap. Scientists have not yet affirmed the exact function of this headdress. With most members of this family, the head is hidden under a rounded cap. The Wanonosaurus, however, didn't want to follow this fashion trend. It instead sported a bifurcated hat, as well as being extremely small in size. Even as an adult, this dinosaur would barely reach a human's knee in height. Eutyronus May this beast serve as definitive proof of dinosaurs' kinship with birds. The Eutyronus' entire body was covered in small feathers. Given that this dinosaur was a pteropod and walked upright, it might give an impression much like a chicken. If it wasn't for one big butt, this feather-covered lizard weighed about two tons and was a dangerous predator. This combination of a killing machine and a benign appearance in the eyes of humankind makes Eutyronus a fairly unusual member of the dinosaur era. Sucosaurus or Susasaurus. However, the strangest member of the pteropods happens to be this very animal. 
The Sucosaurus, like the Eutyrannus, was a relative of the T-Rex. Truthfully, when comparing the appearance of the Sucosaurus with the Tyrannosaurus, few will notice any common features. This member of the Cretaceous period looks a bit like a giant rat with a neck and a head of a vulture. An appearance like this might seem amusing, but behaviorally, it was just like any other member of its family. And towering at 7 meters or 23 feet, with enormous claws on its front paws, could easily terrify small animals. It's doubtful those same animals would be joking about this beast's appearance. Epidendrosaurus Only one skeleton of this small dinosaur has ever been found. It was uncovered in China almost 20 years ago. Scientists hypothesized that the Epidendrosaurus was one of the first species to live in trees. It's possible that this is the lizard responsible for all the birds we know today. The uncovered specimen is about 5 centimeters, or 2 inches, in size. And since this is the only find of its kind, scientists can't say for sure whether it's an adult or merely a cub. The Epidendrosaurus's primary distinguishing feature is the structure of its fingers and claws with a particularly elongated third finger. They are a far cry from bird wings and more similar to claws. The dinosaur most likely acquired this tool through evolution. Its long, slender fingers allowed it to pick up insects out of fissures in the bark. Aronosaurus. This dinosaur appears as though there was an attempt to assemble as many incongruous features as possible in terms of appearance. At 7 meters, or 23 feet in height, and sporting a powerful body, it had a disproportionately small, elongated head. This head finished off with a genuine beak, and there is webbing between its jaws. The Aronosaurus also has an entire back that resembles a high, bright ridge. Their hind legs are much more impressive and longer than the front legs. Apparently, as they walked upright, they didn't necessarily rely on the front feet, but the very very tips of the paws. This beauty lived in the continent of Africa at the beginning of the Cretaceous period. Archosaurus Apparently, the early Cretaceous period is chock full of evolutionary experiments with the appearance of dinosaurs. Archosaurs lived during this period. Their bones and the remains of many other species have been unearthed in China. It might appear as though a complete copy of the Stegosaurus, but for some reason, this dinosaur decided to give up its coveted dorsal plates. When you gaze at the Archosaurus, you get the impression that the plates seem to have been carved off. But if scientists are suggesting the Stegosaurus plates were used for thermoregulation, then perhaps the Archosaurus' climate made it possible to evolve without them? Or perhaps they managed to find a way to cool themselves with other methods. Cetacosaurus The name of this dinosaur translates to parrot lizard, and the Cetacosaurus lives up to this name. It's only about twice the size of current-day parrots. It received its name from the beak and spine to top its head. It also has a bunch of bright feathers on its back towards the base of its tail. A decade ago, scientists believed that these feathers were much longer, including the dinosaur's front paws. This peculiar beast lived, naturally, during the Cretaceous period on the Asian continent. There's even a separate Siberian subspecies of Cetacosauruses. Contosaurus. Once again, modern China's territory pops up in our review. It can be guessed, however, by the name of the dinosaur. Contosaurus belongs to the Hadrosaurus family, and, like all Hadrosaurs, it has a bone outgrowth on its head. Until recently, it was thought that this growth looked just like a unicorn horn. But modern science is still inclined to believe that their long, thin bone was part of a large ridge were covered with feathers and had front limbs that resembled modern wings. For example, velociraptors looked very different from the beast Spielberg depicted in Jurassic Park. If real velociraptors had been chasing the characters on screen, they wouldn't look as dangerous. In general, his additional wings aided in this at all. Cryolophosaurus Another relative of the Tyrannosaurus gets a review in our video. The Cryolophosaurus was almost equal in both size and teeth length to its famous descendants of the Cretaceous period. Most likely, it was one of the members from the top of the food chain of the early Jurassic. But it would hardly make the grade in terms of the most dangerous predator in some famous movie. The reason would be the bright crest on its face. Scientists are still arguing about the purpose of this accessory. But one thing is certain, whatever function it serves, the comb makes this fearsome predator look ridiculous. Notronic Probably one of the most unusual members of the pteropod family. The Notronychus, 
unlike most of its relatives, was a herbivore and not a predator. This and walking on two legs didn't add to its speed. It was hindered by the shape of its pelvis. It is similar in body shape to modern sloths. Therefore, scientists assumed that the Nitronychus' way of life coincided with the lifestyles of modern animals. Imagine a 5-meter or 16.5-inch long giant covered with fluffy feathers moving leisurely through the late Cretaceous forests as it slowly ate leaves atop treetops. Simultaneously, the Nitronychus, like the sloth, possessed long, sharp claws on its front paws. This helped them not only defend themselves from predators, but also allow them to bend the tops of trees. Thank you for watching this video to completion. We remind you that you can learn more about the appearance, habits, and development of dinosaurs from other videos on our channel. The Most Dangerous Prehistoric Ocean Predators Life on Earth had its origins in water, and over hundreds of millions of years of evolution, the seas and oceans have been home to a large variety of living creatures. More than 500 million years ago, the first marine predators appeared. Ever since, the title for the most dangerous prehistoric ocean predator has been passed down amongst these beasts in every geological period. Their evolution took many forms. In this video, we'll tell you about the most dangerous hunters to have ever lived in the world's oceans. To be the first to know about the release of new videos with stories about the peculiarities of dinosaur evolution and the development of life on Earth, you should click on the subscribe button. Additionally, our viewers can express their opinions via likes and comments. Anomalocaris could be considered one of the first predators on the planet. Despite its relatively small height, which came out to less than 60 centimeters or 24 inches, this member of the arthropods was a major threat in the underwater Cambrian world. It was unique for its advanced swimming ability for its time. It is likely that it could move swiftly with wave-like movements of flat spinners on either side of its body. Its tail fin acted as a rudder. The Anomalocaris's superior vision also helped it find prey amidst the waves. Its faceted eyes were closer to perfection than the eyes of modern insects. The Cambrian period was a golden age for underwater arthropods. Approximately 460 million years ago, crustaceans reigned supreme on the sea floor. These ancestors to crayfish, crabs, and scorpions shared a similar body structure to their modern counterparts, though theirs could grow up to 2 meters or 6 feet long. Scientists have not yet settled on whether the sea scorpions at that time were poisonous, but the similarity in tail structure to contemporary scorpions lends faith to this hypothesis. Sharks were already around in the seas of the Devonian Paleozoic. In many ways, they resembled the primary hunters of today's seas and oceans. But even sharks would have something to fear back then. The jaws of the giant Dunkleosteus jellyfish could bite even the largest of these sharks in half. Dunkleosteus grew as large as 10 meters or 33 feet in length, and their body was protected by a powerful armor that no beast could penetrate. At the very beginning of the Age of Dinosaurs, the ocean was home to a very strange and yet dangerous fish. Externally, the Helicoprion was very similar to the shark, though its closest relative is the modern perch. This predator was by no means a giant. Its length never exceeded 4.5 meters or 15 feet. However, it came equipped with a rather unusual lower jaw. It was shaped in a spiral and studded with sharp, jagged teeth. Scientists speculate that this jaw might have rotated like a circular saw. Another predator, which was tiny for its time, lived during the Triassic period. Nothosaurus was no more than 4 meters or 13 feet long. The body, however, finished off with a head equipped with large jaws full of long, sharp teeth. It's believed that this creature fed mainly on fish and squid and was an ambush predator. Judging by its body shape, it was similar in structure to modern crocodiles, and this is pretty believable. Towards the end of the 19th century, the remains of a large pleosaur was discovered in the United States. It was named the Megalneosaurus. The bones of this monster are rather poorly preserved. Scientists reconstructed its appearance using its 1.5-meter or 5-foot-long tail and some other surviving bones. 
They also concluded that this sea lizard reached a length of 10 to 12 meters, or 33 to 39 feet, and lived during the late Jurassic period. Another large member of the Jurassic Pleosaur family was the Leoplerodon. According to various estimates, it reached a size of anywhere between 6 to 15 meters, or 20 to 50 feet. In rarer sources, you might find that figure as high as 25 meters, or 82 feet. After studying this dinosaur's body structure, scientists concluded that it was unlikely to have been able to develop great speeds when chasing prey. But just like modern crocodiles, this predator was still capable of quick jerking motions and agile maneuvers. At the turn of the Jurassic and Crustaceous periods, Dacosaurus could be found in both seas and oceans. These were crocodile-like creatures up to 6 meters, or 20 feet long, and belonged to the Archosaurus family. Their remains were discovered from Russia all the way to Argentina. They're the only wholly marine archosaurs. Dacosaurus had a large skull with a short snout and uniquely shaped teeth. Mauisaurus, a creature which lived in the waters of modern New Zealand during the Cretaceous period, was about 20 meters or 60 feet. 75% of this length was accommodated by its neck and small head. It's believed that this lizard grew such a long neck in order to hunt fish more effectively. A giant body with clippers could frighten away prey. This is why it's best to keep your prey at a distance. The small head didn't cause any fear around its prey. One might agree that this is a pretty original and effective way to hunt. One of the largest pleosaurs is the Kronosaurus. This 10 meter or 33 feet long lizard lived in the seas near the South Pole in the middle of the Cretaceous period. Its remains were first discovered in Australia. About a third of its total length was just a massive head with powerful jaws. The flippers on the Kronosaurus resembled those of the modern tortoise. It has been suggested that these predators may have come ashore to lay eggs on sandy beaches. Around 65 million years ago, one of the most dangerous marine predators to have ever lived was called the Mosasaurus. According to varied sources, it was 17 to 20 meters, or 56 to 65 feet in length, and was considered the largest lizard on Earth. Its close relatives are the modern monitor lizards. Mosasaurus had a giant barrel-shaped body with two pairs of flippers. Their tail was similar to that of sharks and some ichthyosaurs. The bite force of its jaws could put to shame those of a modern crocodile several times over. Hardly any animal was capable of surviving an encounter with this formidable predator. It was only the age of dinosaurs that was brought to an end as a result of climate change fueled by a giant asteroid collision with the Earth. Many marine creatures couldn't adapt to the new living conditions either. Thus, during the Cenozoic era, there were plenty of empty niches to fill in the hierarchy of underwater hunters. One of them was occupied by predatory whales, the Basilosaurus. Their average length came in at about 20 meters or 65 feet. This size made them one of the most imposing predators of their time. Unlike modern whales, however, Basilosaurus were not capable of echolocation and could not actively dive. They moved by wriggling in the water as snakes do. This mixture of a whale, snake, and crocodile was a threat to smaller cetaceans and ancient sharks. Later on in time, the sharks managed to win back first place amongst the marine predators. All thanks for that go to the Megalodon. About 25 million years ago, these giant sharks, about 20 meters or 65 feet long, were the largest members of all marine fauna. With the help of teeth and jaws and other remains which have been discovered, scientists assume these bus-sized monsters may have even lived as far back as 1.5 million years ago. This means the first members of mankind could have encountered them in person. We're lucky that modern sharks don't grow this large and megalodons couldn't survive the current consequences of the latest ice age. A worthy competitor appeared amidst the megalodons around 13 million years ago. Melville's Leviathan, a giant sperm whale with teeth over 30 centimeters or 12 inches, hunted the same prey as the largest shark in the Earth's history. This cetacean family member's serious advantage was the presence of an echo sounder. The skull of this sperm whale was found off the coast of South America in 2008. The length of this skull was 3 meters, or 10 feet, and the leviathan's teeth were found to be 12 to 32 centimeters, or 5 to 13 inches in diameter. Neither great sharks, nor the leviathan, nor many other predators described above, survived to the present day. 
but in our modern seas and oceans, many of their descendants still thrive. Even if they can't boast the same size, modern sharks, whales, and crocodiles still pose a serious threat to other marine animals and humans. It's true that among modern marine predators, they are giants of their own. Sea stingrays, which are the descendants of ancient sharks, once reached 5 meters or 16 feet in size. Even now, it's not uncommon to find stingrays with a fin span of over 2 meters or 6 feet at the ocean's depths. The main danger for humans is that giant stingrays are equipped with poison. At the same time, they camouflage very well. One might not have time to process the danger they pose. We are grateful to the viewers who have watched till the end of this video. If you are fascinated by these prehistoric marine predators, you can learn about other members of the dinosaur era and other geological periods from other videos posted to our channel. What if the dinosaurs hadn't died out 66 million years ago? The most mass extinction in history happened on our planet 66 million years ago. After a collision with a giant asteroid, the planet was shaken by a series of natural disasters, which led to the disappearance of some of the most mysterious and interesting creatures, dinosaurs. Many scientists are trying to make assumptions about the possibility of evolution if this extinction had not happened. It's hard enough to imagine how prehistoric pangolins would change over time in this case. It's hard enough to imagine how prehistoric pangolins would change over time in this case. It's even more difficult to understand would take mammals their current place at the top of the food chain and a species like man would appear. The answer to the first question may have been given to the Scottish scientist Dougal Dixon, who published a book in 1988 in which he tried to predict possible options for the evolution of many species of dinosaurs. The author presented the descendants of some living creatures from the age of dinosaurs in a rather peculiar way and gave them interesting names. But all his assumptions have scientifically based arguments. Almost all creatures invented by the Scott have analogs in the modern animal kingdom. The names of these animals are related more to their appearance and manner of behavior. For example, in South America, it would be possible for a small flock of predators to appear, the name of which can be translated into Russian as Tazakazu. The scientist also suggested that a weaver could live on the territory of modern Australia. It was supposed to become a descendant of small theropods, which would switch to nutrition by straining water and catching small mollusks and crustaceans in it. The principle of nutrition would also determine the appearance of this creature. It's likely that the weaver would be like a flamingo. The most interesting animal could be a large predator named Gourmet. He could become a descendant of a Tyrannosaurus or other large theropod. Dougal Dixon suggested that the forelimbs, which T. rex practically did not use already at the end of the real age of dinosaurs, would disappear completely in the process of evolution. The scientists also suggested that for faster ingestion of prey, the jaws of this creature will become elastic, like modern snakes. Some species of dinosaurs would try to populate the seas and oceans. In the history of the animal world, there are enough examples of such development. The ancestors of modern whales, seals, manatees returned back from land to the seas. It is the truth, the Cretaceous seas were inhabited by quite formidable predators such as giant sharks, saltwater crocodiles, plesiosaurs, mosasaurs, and ichthyosaurs. But it is quite possible that some species of dinosaurs could succeed. Many dinosaur researchers agree that the appearance of flowering plants at the end of the Cretaceous period led to the appearance of small dinosaurs living in trees and feeding on fruit and leaves. If they survived a meteorite fall, they could take up the entire ecological niche which is occupied by primates now. Therefore, monkeys would be forced to develop in another way or not appear at all. In this case, the appearance of a man, at least as we know it, would be a big question. Of course, raptors that have survived to our times would not resemble their giant ancestors from the age of dinosaurs. Most likely, they would significantly reduce in size and develop new survival mechanisms, 
adapting to changes in climate, water, and air composition, the appearance of new species of plants and animals. But the fate of mammals in the event of the survival of dinosaurs would be unenviable. The ancestors of the planet's modern hosts lived side by side with dinosaurs for about 166 million years, but were never able to come out from their shadow. Giant raptors died out just 66 million years ago. By evolutionary standards, this is not such a significant time to change the situation in favor of creatures that for a longer time could not displace dinosaurs from any major life niches. But if we assume that the planet and all life on it after the end of the Cretaceous period began to develop in parallel with the remaining dinosaurs in the same way as it happened after their extinction, it can be even assumed that the first people appeared in the same way as in the history we know, but lived simultaneously with the descendants of dinosaurs. Some scientists suggest that the coexistence of real animals on two continents formed after the division of the supercontinent in Gondwana and Laurasia can be considered as a model of mammalian and dinosaur coexistence. These continents diverged at the moment when the first placental mammals began to appear on the planet. But none of them managed to get into Laurasia. At that time, both continents were inhabited by various species of birds, including giant flightless predators, reptiles and amphibians prospered on Earth. In the Gondwana territory, placental mammals have taken control and only marsupials remained in Laurasia. The territory of Gondwana included modern Australia and South America. It is known that on these continents, marsupials could not make up serious competition for crocodiles, large monitor lizards, and birds of prey. And in the territories that were part of Laurasia, mammals have risen to the very top of the food pyramid. Based on this data, it may well be assumed that surviving dinosaurs would dominate one continent and lose the evolutionary race on another. It is possible that with the further drift of continental plates, these two worlds would begin to collide in different parts of the planet, and the descendants of dinosaurs would gradually give up their positions. But even now, there is a continent where mammals have not been able to seriously develop. Therefore, surviving dinosaurs could live in Australia and feel quite comfortable there in our time. Given their greater adaptability and more efficient mode of movement, dinosaurs here could greatly squeeze crocodiles and giant monitor lizards. You've watched another video of the Dinosaur Age channel. Rate our video, like or comment and be sure to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss new interesting videos of Age of Dinosaurs. The Most Dangerous Predators of the Ice Age If you believe that during the Ice Age, the entirety of the Earth's surface was covered in a layer of ice multiple meters thick, and that the only remaining living creatures were microorganisms thriving in the ocean around geothermal vents and the like, then you are definitely mistaken. Of course, these sorts of global catastrophes have taken place in Earth's history. The Age of Dinosaurs, for example, concluded this way. More predominantly, however, an ice age is understood as being a prolonged cooling of the global climate. Such periods are characterized by a regularly alternating pattern of abrupt cooling periods and so-called interglacial thaws. By the way, we are currently living through one of these warming trends. To learn more about various previous ice ages and the development of life on Earth, you can subscribe to our channel. Subscribers will be the first to find out about new videos and have the opportunity to express their opinions via like and comments. Following the change in temperature and movement in the polar ice, the animal habitat went through changes of their own. Life was barely hanging on around the equator which then quickly spread towards polar latitudes. This contributed to an emergence of new species. During this current ice age, all kinds of animals appeared on the planet. Many of them, for numerous reasons, have gone extinct. Unfortunately, we're unlikely to see mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses once more grazing in the steppes of Siberia. And in place of grassy plains in these parts, we now find dense forests and snowy deserts. 
The mammoth fauna spawned not only a collection of peculiar herbivores, but also a huge number of predators which hunted them. Among the animals occupying the upper echelon of the food chain, many stood out from the rest for their unusual appearance and size. They are the main heroes of our video. Saber-toothed cats The saber-toothed tiger is often called the representative of the saber-toothed cats, or meharids. But in terms of kinship, these Ice Age predators are still closer to modern cats than the large felines of our time. The main features that distinguish saber-toothed ancestors from their present-day descendants include a short tail and prominent fangs. In some species, these fangs can reach up to 17 centimeters 7 inches, in length. These evolutionary adaptations aided the saber-toothed tigers in preying on various thick-skinned ungulates, such as deer, bison, and camels. Modern art, as depicted in Hollywood movies and cartoons, have created an iconic image in our collective mind of the saber-toothed tiger hunting mammoths. Scientists, however, have found this behavior to be an exception to the rule. After all, it is rather rare for modern large cats to go after adult elephants. Thus, it is believed that, most likely, Ice Age predators could attack a baby mammoth. The most infamous members of the saber-tooth family appear to be the Smilodon and the Homotherium. Smilodons inhabited territories spanning both Americas. They grew up to 1.2 meters 4 feet, at their withers and weighed in about 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. Homotherians were slightly smaller and lived throughout Africa and Eurasia as well as parts of North America. The last saber-toothed cats went extinct approximately 8 to 10,000 years ago. This means the last of their species competed for food amongst the lions, tigers, and jaguars we recognize today. Fororacos These large birds of prey inhabited nearly every continent, often in niches vacated by newly extinct dinosaurs. We know them by their common name Fororacos, but in fact, they were a facet of an entire family of winged hunters, which included various species. What they all possessed in common was an inability to fly, a large jaw size, powerful legs, and gigantic beaks. For several tens of millions of years, these terrifying birds were a menace for all other animals inhabiting the jungles of South America. Amphicean Amphicean, or dog bear, inhabited most of today's European nations. These strange and dangerous creatures shared features with various modern species. They possessed a long tail similar to modern cats, broad bear-like paws including claws that did not retract inward, and a canine skull equipped with powerful jaws. Amphiseans were most likely capable of relatively fast speeds, but scientists are inclined to believe that they favored ambushing prey. Judging by the largest remains discovered, the biggest canine bears weighed over 200 kilograms or 440 pounds. gigantic bears. In addition to canine bears, the ancestors of modern bears which are more similar to the beasts we're accustomed to also lived in Europe and North America. The distant ancestors of brown bears, Kodiaks, and grizzlies, however, were much larger than their descendants. For example, the Arctodus, or short-faced bear, could grow as large as a ton. Its body and muscle were much shorter than that of modern bears, and its paws were longer. This led scientists to speculate that despite such an enormous mass, these giants could run fast enough to catch prey. There's also speculation as to whether Arctodus might have stolen prey away from smaller cats, Smilodons and American lions. Cave bears received their namesake because the remains were found in mass in caves all across the European continent. In the Bear Cave, located in Romania, 140 skeletons of these large predators were discovered. Research has determined these bears could grow as tall as 3.5 meters, or 11.5 feet. Entelodon These massive boars, which lived in both Eurasia and North America, inflicted terror on all other living things. Like their pig descendants, these infernal boars were not squeamish concerning food, and the combination of great weight, high speed, and a small brain made them dangerous even to the saber-toothed cats. Entelodons could hunt smaller animals or steal prey from other predators. Hyenodon Referring to a family of predators that appeared about 50 million years ago. Among them, there appeared animals as large as the modern fowl 
but also real monsters weighing in at around 300 kilograms or 660 pounds and rising as high as 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall. The primary feature of the hyenodons was their huge head. Together with its jaws, it was about one-third the length of the animal's body. Simultaneously, these jaws were extremely powerful and filled with long, sharp teeth. Hyenodons could tear through the hardest bones. This meant they could hunt both herbivores and feed on carrion alike. With an impressive arsenal of traits and more than likely a gregarious hunting method, hyenodons could seriously compete with big cats and giant bears. But for 15 million years, these predators have been completely extinct. Scientists pose it that by evolving such large jaws, hyenodons were unable to compensate to provide a large enough brain. Additionally, most ungulates of their time began shifting escape tactics and favoring speed. The massive, yet unintelligent hyenodons did not evolve their traits and hunting tactics in time to survive. Dire Wolf It turns out that the dire wolves which populate the expanse of George Martin's Game of Thrones universe are not merely a figment of the writer's imagination. The largest wolves ever to exist found their home in North America. They were comparable in height to modern gray wolves, but weighed more and were built larger. Like all other members of this family, dire wolves lived and hunted in packs. Therefore, in a struggle for prey and territory, they could throw their weight against any of the contemporaneous predators. The most terrifying predator of all this era, however, was a creature boasting small size and lacking large teeth and jaws. This dangerous beast not only preyed upon large herbivores, such as the mammoth, but was also willing to engage in combat with all the aforementioned creatures. According to most scientists, it was this animal's insatiable appetite that caused the extinction of many species of that era. This animal was man, and their main weapons were a developed brain and the tools this brain helped them create. Thanks to this, man has survived many more formidable predators and successfully lives on to the present day, occupying the highest order of the food chain. But the next round of climate change is not far off. Scientists predict another global cooling period over the next hundred years. Only time will tell whether our descendants will successfully reign over the world when the ice caps recede from the equator to the poles once again. Thank you for watching this video to the very end. If you're interested in stories about the age of dinosaurs and other epics of our planet's life, you can learn more about them by watching the rest of our material which is posted to our channel. What if we brought the dinosaurs back to our time? Dinosaurs! These animals dominated Earth for more than 140 million years, and the reason for the decline of their era was the collision of Earth with a huge asteroid. But today, we'll not talk about dinosaurs, but we will tell you about one huge desire of all paleontologists. Man has long been tormented by the question, is it possible to return these long-gone reptiles from the realm of the dead? Is Jurassic Park possible in modern times? And if we could do it after all, would we really like it? But before answering these questions, be sure to subscribe to our Dinosaur Age channel. Rate our videos and write comments. Your opinion is very important to us. And now, we continue. The basic concept of dinosaur resurrection starts with a mosquito filled with DNA that has been stored in amber for tens of millions of years. But is it scientifically possible, or is it all fiction? Amber is a wood resin produced by some coniferous trees which, over thousands of years, has become petrified due to its high pressure and temperature. For years, the resin has hardened, thereby forming a gem that people have used as jewelry for millennia. Dinosaur DNA, which could have been kept inside blood-sucking insects buried in amber, is of great interest, since DNA contains genetic information on the growth and functioning of all living beings on the planet. But can ancient DNA extracted from amber be a genetic material to recreate extinct animals? As modern scientists say, we have mosquitoes and other biting parasites such as flies and fleas that have survived since dinosaurs in amber. 
But the fact is that when a sample is found in amber, it consists only of husks and does not contain soft tissue. So the blood of mosquitoes in amber will not be preserved, and as a result, DNA is simply impossible to extract. Based on this, it can be concluded that Jurassic Park cannot be created in the way that the famous science fiction writer Michael Crichton wrote. But the search for dinosaur DNA doesn't end there. The remains of blood were still found inside ancient insects, but not in amber. A few years ago, an article was published about a mosquito from the Eocene. That's about 45 million years ago. That is, about 20 million years after the dinosaurs became extinct. The mosquito is well preserved in the bottom sediments of the lake and had a red pigment in the belly. When the scientists tested this pigment chemically, they found hemoglobin derived porphyrins. As known, these decay products of hemoglobin, a red protein, are responsible for saturating the body's tissues with oxygen in the body of almost all vertebrates. And the idea that one day we can find a mosquito or a biting fly from the Mesozoic with some parts of the blood still held is not so fantastic. But that's not all. Even if paleontologists manage to find preserved blood, it does not mean that scientists will find DNA in it. Thus, even if dinosaur blood was found inside an ancient insect, the ability to recreate a reptile from it is not guaranteed. In 2015, paleontology scientists have found within the fossil bone of a Cretaceous dinosaur what they interpreted as erythrocyte, also known as red blood cells. These blood cells contain nuclei that mammals do not have, so it's been suggested that they are red reptile blood cells. Scientists compared them to birds' red blood cells and it showed some morphological similarities. Using modern equipment, scientists tried to find at least some trace of DNA in this material, but could not detect anything. The result of this work is, even if we manage to find blood or soft tissue, it is far from a fact that we will find DNA. Ancient DNA has already been extracted from permafrost and has also been found in fossils of bones or other parts of the body that are not yet fully fossilized. But DNA is vulnerable and degrades very quickly. Sunlight also has a negative effect and water significantly accelerates the deterioration of DNA. To work with DNA, strictly controlled conditions must be maintained. Currently, the oldest DNA found is about a million years old, although it may be younger because the exact age is still very difficult to determine. And to get to the dinosaurs, you need to find DNA 65 times older. Now, let's imagine if dinosaur DNA has been discovered and what happens next? If you work at Jurassic Park's Genetic Engineering Center, you just combine it with a frog's DNA and recreate the extinct reptile. After all, in the film Jurassic Park, they say that they found fragmented DNA. They determined where the holes were and filled them with frog DNA. But the problem is that we can't know where the holes are if we don't have the whole genome. A genome is a complete set of DNA from a living being. Without the full genome, it would be impossible to tell which parts of DNA were found, and therefore, it would be impossible to fill in the gaps to build an entire animal. But if we had the whole genome and we were going to fill the holes with fragments, then we definitely wouldn't do this with frogs, because frogs are amphibians. If we were going to do this, we would use the DNA of birds, because birds are direct descendants of dinosaurs. Well, or they would do it with the DNA of a crocodile, because they have a common ancestor with dinosaurs. So, can we clone dinosaurs after all? Dinosaurs went extinct about 66 million years ago, and with so much time gone, it's unlikely that it'll be possible to find dinosaur DNA today. But some paleontologist scientists refuse to stop its search, hoping to get lucky. If we take into account all the above information, then we can conclude that the cloning of the dinosaur is no longer an urgent topic, but there is an alternative way to recreate extinct animals, such as redesigning them. To do this, you need to start with a living animal and return to ancient reptiles, trying to reverse at least 66 million years of evolution.
For example, we could take a chicken and genetically engineer it so it has teeth or a long tail. But even if we do, it will no longer be a dinosaur because it was reconstructed. Beyond that, recreating dinosaurs or any other extinct animal can cause some ethical dilemmas. An animal that went extinct naturally 150 million years ago knows nothing about the world. How will it exist now? What will it eat if the grass in its era did not already exist? What is its function in this habitat? The attempt to resurrect dinosaurs presents many scientific and ethical challenges, and creating a creature that could be put on public display in zoos or amusement parks like Jurassic World is likely not the answer to these questions. So, at the moment, the right decision will be to leave the dinosaurs in the past. And the use of genetic engineering to return extinct animals can be considered necessary under other circumstances, such as the return of those animal species that have become extinct due to human actions on the planet. So, if someone decides to return an extinct wandering pigeon that lived in the modern ecosystem and fully fit into it, then this action would be justified by a good goal. You've watched another video of the Dinosaur Age channel. Rate our video, like or comment, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new interesting Dinosaur Age videos.